Now we continue our journey and uh, prove that the subdifferential at any point in the interior of the domain of a convex function and a convex proper function is non-empty. So uh, the theorem is as follows. Let f from our usual finite dimensional inner product space to our bar be proper and convex and let x bar be in the interior of the domain of f. Then the subdifferential of f at x bar is non-empty. Okay, so we want to prove the existence of the subgradient and in order to do this we use the mother of all existence theorems, the Hanbana theorem in its form uh, like the, the separation. So the proof is as follows. We have um, the epigraph of f here and as you and we have the, we have some point here x bar um, f of x bar in the interior of the domain of f so it's in particular in the domain of f and this f of x bar is uh, finite so it's a real number and what we want to do is we want to uh, separate um, the point from the epigraph. This is possible because as you see here this is not in the interior of the epigraph of f and from this um, we go analogously to the um, to the video about affine minorants and we construct some special affine minorant which goes through this point and will therefore um, construct a subdifferential, a, a subgradient um, at x bar. Okay. So this is the plan. So um, first of all, uh, since f is convex, the epigraph of f is also convex. So is convex. Great. Um, we have to um, show that our our assumptions in the in the separation theorem are satisfied. So the next assumption was that x f of x bar is in uh, x bar f of x bar is in um, h times r, but not in the interior of epf. Since f of x bar is a real number um, and f of x bar minus epsilon um, together with x bar, um, this converges to um, x bar f of x bar, but it is not in the epigraph of f because the function, this, this value is smaller than the function value, but the epigraph consists of all um, values which are greater or equal. Okay, and this converges to a, uh, x bar f of x, showing that x bar f of x is not in the interior. So, x bar f of x bar is not in the interior of Epi, uh, yeah, EPF. What is, however, in the interior of EPF is a point is is a point um, above here. So let epsilon and m be as in the previous theorem. And then we have an epsilon environment here and some, some upper bound. So 
the function is bounded from above by this, this value m here um, in the epsilon ball around x bar. So, um, what does this mean? At f of x is less or equal than m uh, for all x in the epsilon ball around x bar. What does this mean? Um, we have f, um, sorry, we have, uh, that does not work out well. Okay, let's delete it like this. So we have x bar um, m, let's say plus epsilon um, in the interior of epi f. Okay, so this will be this point here, and we we will find this um, epsilon ball uh, in in the in the first in the di direction of the first component, and also the epsilon ball in this vertical direction, and this um, is completely contained in epi f here. Yeah. So so we have found an interior point. So the interior of epi f is non-empty. And therefore, um, the requirements for our separation theorem are satisfied. So um, because of this upper bound we have found in the last theorem. Okay, so by the separation theorem, there exists some a alpha, which is not, uh, so this pair is not zero, zero. So either a or alpha or both are uh, not zero with um, um, so if, if we take the inner product of a with any point y um, plus alpha r, um, y r is, uh, will be in the epigraph of f. So we want to separate this point from the epigraph. So this is a point in the epigraph and this will be greater or equal than um, a x bar plus alpha f of x bar. So this is the point and this is the set for all y r in f. All right, so now we have seen in, in the um, chapter on affine minorance that we first have to determine the, um, the sign of alpha. This is equally true here. And as you see, this separating hyperplane, if I write this here, so this is the, the vector L A alpha, um, you see that whenever alpha uh, goes, or the, this normal vector points downwards some, somehow, then this would, would, would assume that epi f is on the, on the lower side, so this will not be possible. And on the other hand, if, if this were vertical here, so if alpha would be, ze uh, uh, sorry, if the normal vector is, is horizontal and the, um, this, this separating line here would be vertical, then you have uh, a part of, of, the, of the epigraph here cut out. Uh, this part here would be cut out if, if the, the normal vector would point in this horizontal direction. And in order to, to exclude this case, we can, um, we, can, uh, we can take a point in, in this direction here, um, which, points, which is points away from A. So we take, we have um, epsilon is greater than zero and f of, of, f of x is certainly a real number for all, for all po uh, points in the, in the epsilon ball around x bar. So what we can take is take the point x bar um, 
minus, and now we take um, probably uh, just to be. Yeah, I think I uh, so I I define this as the closed ball. So we are we are safe if we take epsilon times a over norm of a. So this will be in the epsilon ball around x bar. And then f of x is great uh, is less or equal than m for all of these points. So we can take for example m plus one or so. This is in the epigraph of f. So this means that a in the inner product with this point x bar minus epsilon a over norm of a um, that's it so, uh, yes plus alpha now you have m plus 1 is greater or equal than a x bar plus alpha f of x bar what do have you, what do we have now well we have a a in the inner product with x bar both on the left hand side here and also on the right hand side and what remains is this inner product here which is minus epsilon over norm of alpha times the inner product of a with a itself okay then we have alpha times some some something so alpha times m plus 1 minus f of x bar okay so now we have this and this is greater than and now if we put this on the other side we have we get rid of this minus here so we have epsilon over norm of a times inner product of a with itself here and this is epsilon norm of a so this is norm of a squared all right so this is greater or equal than zero because f of x bar is less or equal than m and it's certainly less or equal than m plus one so it's actually greater strictly greater than zero okay that's important so we can divide by this to, um, and get that alpha is greater or equal than epsilon norm of a divided by m plus one minus f of x bar and now since so if alpha were equal to zero we would have that this thing here would be less or equal than zero so norm of a times some positive number would be less or equal than zero which would mean norm of a would be zero so a alpha equals zero would imply norm of a equals zero and since um, uh, and a would be equal to zero and since we have assumed that a and alpha are not simultane simultaneously um, equal to zero um, we, we, we see here that alpha is greater than zero okay and now we take not this point we take um, x or we take uh, x is fine f of x um, this is in the epigraph of f for x in the domain of f and then this inequality beco uh, becomes so, so the, these are two points where we use this inequality here uh, so this becomes a x plus alpha f of x is greater than greater or equal than a x bar plus alpha f of x bar and this becomes if we divide by alpha f of x greater or equal than uh, dividing by alpha division by alpha is possible because we know now that alpha is strictly greater than zero so f of x greater or equal than f of x bar um, plus and now we have 
this vector here. So we have minus a over alpha x minus x bar. Okay. I guess uh, let's 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 check. We have we divide by alpha. Um, so f of x bar is correct, and we have plus or we have um, minus x. Uh, so since this goes to the right hand side, we get a in the inner product with minus x or minus a in the inner product with x and and minus a in the inner product with minus x bar and everything divided by alpha. So this should be correct. So we have minus a over alpha is in the subdifferential of x of f at x bar and this concludes the proof. So now we have uh, shown that the subdifferential at any interior point of the domain is non-empty and we can formulate a corollary. The corollary is um, again same um, same assumptions let f from h to r bar be proper and convex and let x bar in the interior. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea what I do what I'm doing right now. At yeah. Let's just write this here. X bar in the interior of the domain of f then there exist epsilon greater than zero m and capital m in r such that m less or equal than f of x less or equal than capital m for all x in the epsilon ball around x bar. Okay, and the proof is very simple. Um, so the proof is like, um, take epsilon and m um, like in the well was the like in the theorem before this theorem so in the theorem um, before the last one take a in the subdifferential of f at x bar and then we have f of x um, greater or equal than f of x bar plus a and now we have x minus x bar and x minus x bar will be in, in norm less or equal than epsilon so we can use the cauchy schwarz inequality we have f of x bar minus norm of a norm of f, x minus x bar and since norm of f of x uh, norm of x minus x bar is less than less or equal than epsilon um, and we have a minus here we have f of x bar minus norm of a times epsilon um, and this is our our m Okay, so um, we have now shown that we not only have a, a, an upper bound, a capital M, we also have a low, lower bound, the small m, and this is given by the subgradient we just constructed. And this shows that um, f is locally bo bounded around x bar in both directions.